Welcome to Establish the Edge. I'm your host, Mike Leone, here with a Game Scores podcast with Adam Rausch. Today, we'll be looking at the Week 11 uh, GPP Game Scores and looking at it from a DFS stacking perspective. Before we get into that, I do want to note that this podcast is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. If you use promo code ETR, you'll get an initial deposit match bonus up to $100 over there. You can play in their Battle Royale contest. They're going to have playoff best ball launching somewhat soon. So definitely check out Underdog and use promo code ETR over there. Adam and I are back after a couple of weeks off, just didn't work schedule wise. So happy to be back here talking game scores and yeah, stacking's been tough, particularly on DraftKings. Um, you know, Al Zeidenfeld, for those not familiar with Al Smizzle, had a good kind of rant on his Twitch channel about how the really difficult pricing, for some reason, the pricing on DraftKings seems particularly tight around wide receivers, and that has contributed to making stacking a little bit more difficult. And that's something that I've noticed, but maybe not paid as close of attention to as I should have. So um, that was an interesting thought. I started, thought I'd start the show just putting that out there that, you know, there's always going to be a point at which we are sacrificing too much projection to get the correlation. in. if everybody was an equal projected value, correlation would be so important. Um, if we have to sacrifice three, four points to get in our correlation, like there's kind of a break even point at which like we're better off not correlating. And uh, we've certainly seen, at least with Justin Fields, the last couple of weeks, uh, the correlation has worked with him because Komet has done so well as as the cheap tight end, but he's also a cheaper running quarterback that you could have played naked. His price is now up. We'll talk about this a little bit more on Established a Million on Saturday, would think. But um, yeah, Adam, that's just something I was thinking about as we were setting up for this week and seeing some of your notes about some of the best game stacks being hard to fit. Yeah, and I think some of the most successful lineups last week were naked field stacks uh, without any correlation. I want to say the the Millie Maker lineup um, put that strategy into effect. Uh, you know, one of the games that I think got the most attention last week was that Buffalo Minnesota game, and where we saw Justin Jefferson and Stephon Diggs just absolutely go off. You know, easy correlation, right? I mean, you can play those two guys in a game it's high you know highly correlated it's a high total both of those guys have amazing games but they're so expensive it's you, you can't play them and i think you, you sacrifice too much um you know they both got there especially jefferson and he was in winning lineups but um you know the price is very inhibitive and cousins and allen didn't get to the ceilings that they needed to in order to support that so yeah i mean if you have a running quarterback like Fields who you're going to be able to save salary on, uh, but, you know, he, he can get that ceiling outcome without necessarily getting his receivers involved. So it makes it tough to kind of stack uh, with expensive receivers. I'm hopeful that we'll have a little bit of an easier time this week, but um, <laughs> especially on DraftKings, I, I don't know if we're getting much of a break this week again. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll look at that a little bit more closely, but yeah, you pointed out last week, um, I know Mark Dinkenbring had a sweat, had a pretty good finish in one of the DraftKings GPPs who played the Mahomes, Kirk, uh, Kelsey stack, and he unfortunately had Juju in that, and yeah. um, Juju gets hurt, but he had... There were some successful mini correlations around stuff. Like, as you point out with the million maker, you definitely didn't have to, but there were some. And like one of the minis he had was the Christian Watson, Tony Pollard, you know, getting Watson at really low ownership. We haven't had a lot of cheap wide receivers that, that we can play with. So um, that was a really good call by Mark getting that in there. So there, there was some stuff that, that you could do as far as mini correlations, if you were dead on, but yeah, to your point, Adam, it is frustrating when like something like Jefferson and Diggs, um, it's just really tough to play together. It's like a smart correlated ceiling and um, it, it might not even be a smart play at this point in time. And uh, week 11, we see that's difficult. One of the highest games in the game scores is Dallas, Minnesota. And, you know, you you put in our notes how it's like tough to fit in Jefferson and CeeDee Lamb. And I had fooled around with a shell. I, I'm pulling up on the screen here for those watching on YouTube. Um, just to show that like it's difficult. Like if you do a cousins double with like Jefferson Hawkinson with like the chalk punt defense, bring back with Pollard if you assume Zeke's out, who will be chalk, 
And then you play like chalk Damian Pierce, which is like one of the cheaper running backs you can play. Like your average salary remaining is 4,700. And like, that's not a lot with the way they're pricing wide receivers. Like if we could get a lot of good wide receivers in the four to five K range, not even a lot, but like some more, you know, higher upside ones. Um, but it's been difficult with like either having to play a third running back in that 6,500, 7,500 range or if you do want to play some of the better expensive wide receivers around this, not even expensive, but just mid tier, you do the double pump with tight end. So it's definitely a year you got to get creative with the way DraftKings is priced and things. I think this Dallas Minnesota stack that rates really well is indicative of that. Yeah. You mentioned uh double stacking with tight end being a more prevalent strategy this year. And I think we've we've now had a few weeks where it's been a viable strategy and it's not necessarily a strategy that I think as GPP players, we want to have to resort to. You really want to use it in, in the best spots possible where it makes the most sense. But I feel like we're having to look at that strategy more in the last few weeks because we're kind of forced to. The, the wide receiver pricing is just so, it's so expensive that it gets so hard to fit those upper echelon wide receivers. And then you're kind of left with that low average salary. Like we just, you just showed on that shell of yours, you know, you want to, and, and not, I'm not saying it's not a viable strategy, but you want to, you want to make sure that you're not sacrificing too much projection when you are double stacking with tight end. Yeah, absolutely. And this game, um, last week, obviously uh, Pollard hit, as like the chalkier running back, um, if he didn't get the overtime, it would have been more of a, a middling performance and sort of the leverage with CD lamb over him would have worked out really well. It still worked out really well because CD lamb had such a good game, but it was more like a huge game stack that would have paid off uh, this Cleveland Buffalo game. Adam that rates crazy well in our game scores do want to note that I think a lot of times when there's changes to environments like injuries and whatnot, or in this case, the location of a game, uh, we can be quicker than others to update our projections and you know what the market is projecting is factoring into our ownership to a certain extent so i think our ownership projections are are sure to come up in this cleveland buffalo game which will bring the game score down right now it's just an absolutely outrageous game score <clears throat> but i do think these two games are you know they're two dome games with like some high ceiling exciting players you know both cleveland at buffalo dallas at minnesota these are the games in theory that you really want to be targeting. The only other game, there is another game, dome game with a similar total that's Chicago at Atlanta, but could be such a run fest that it's like actually not popping on game scores, which is yeah. interesting. But yeah, I'll, I'll get some quick thoughts on this Buffalo game. By the way, shout out to you, Mike, for getting in the under uh, when it went down to 41 and a half or 42. So the uh, over, yeah, I got in the over. I got the over. Sorry, yeah, it's early here. Uh, props to you, though. Shout out to Mike. Um, yeah, I I think the key to this game, just like you know, we wanted to play, we wanted we were going to be high on that Cleveland Miami game last week, and you know, unfortunately, it just didn't really get there in terms of ceiling outcomes. I think I I think we can have a little bit more faith in Buffalo in a dome, even though things are kind of switching around for them last second. They kind of, you know now they got to travel essentially, but I think the biggest key again is hey, can Cleveland push Buffalo? And I, we know Buffalo's ownership projection is going to come up. Cleveland's is also really, really low. I think it'll come up a little bit just because of the game environment, but there's still going to be opportunities to play some some Browns at low ownership, I think. And it's just a matter of will they push? You know, DPJ came through at a lower price tag last week. You know, could we see a ceiling game from Amari? Um, are, are the, you know, would a guy like Harrison Bryant be viable again? You know, that that's going to be the key, I think, in order to get that that game stack right, because you're going to have some affordable options too for Cleveland. Yeah, the difficult part with Cleveland too, like Harrison Bryant on DraftKings seems like a nice way to just kind of correlate tight end, but I also feel like if I'm playing the Allen double, I want to play. I'm gonna play Knox. Got, with, yeah, you want to play Knox. I want to play Knox, but I guess you could play both as we hit like double tight end, double correlated tight end. Like we, we, if you're fitting in an expensive digs and an expensive, um, Josh Allen. And that's sort of like what I got with last week with, I played a lot of Miami stacks that didn't work out with Cleveland, but it was kind of like, oh, I, I can play Harrison Bryan as the punt tight end correlated. And he's so cheap that I could actually play a second Brown and just play this game to blow up. 
and like get in like DPJ, Amari Cooper, or Nick Chubb. And Chubb's always the interesting guy. He's going to come in at really low ownership, I think. But the ceiling is always just like he, he has the widest gap between ceiling and base projection of like anyone every week. You know, if we go to the to running back, uh, I screwed up the table. But if we go to the running back position, you're going to see he's he's one of the worst values on the slate if you're just looking at the base projection. And we've kind of seen why the last couple of weeks where he's found the end zone and that saved him from some like 10 point games, like some really yeah. low potentially scoring games. Um, but from a ceiling perspective, you know, he's he's right up there with, with, with the top guys. It's still a little bit pricey and we know he can speed up a game. So it's it's tough. I find some ways to do it, but I also wonder, like, do you need with Buffalo having such a high pass rate of expectation? Like, can you just play the Allen double and not bring it back? Like, are we at that point, you know, um, where all these guys that are just okay. These, these are all negative values on DraftKings, yeah. you know? So that's something I'm toying with is just playing Buffalo by itself. FanDuel, I think Chubb is like a really good bring back where his base values a little bit better. The scoring system fits him a bit more. The pricing's a bit looser. And I think I'd be a little bit more prone on FanDuel to just say, okay, let me run this back with Chubb and hope he speeds up, right. speeds up the game. Yeah. Let's hope he, he, breaks off a really long touchdown run and speeds up the game. Cause then you're, you're, you're cooking with fire. Um, kind of like why well, I always, I always coin as the Derrick Henry effect where <laughs> yes. you just, you know, at the, at the drop of a hat, just bust off an 80 yard touchdown run. And all of a sudden you're, you're alive, especially if it's early on in the game. So that's what we're hoping for with Chubb. I do agree with you. I think it's more viable and FanDuel. And I think it's okay if you want to just play, you know, a heavy Buffalo stack. I, I don't mind that. I know we are uh, here for the game stacks, but you know it, it's not always easy, especially when you're when you're dealing with Buffalo and the expensive price tag. So I'm not mad at it. Okay, let's look at th so those two games really just blow everybody else out of the water, and then it's kind of like a bunch of middling games. One is Philly at the Colts. I think just off feel, Adam. I think Jalen Hurts this week could really be one of the lowest ownerships we've seen them all season. Uh, Josh Allen is going to project much better at not that much more. And then even Justin Fields is going to project. We have, It's kind of funny. We have the exact same base and ceiling projection on Fields and Jalen Hurts, um, which is just kind of crazy to the decimal. So Hurts at 600 bucks more and recency bias is obviously going to favor Fields. Playing Atlanta is going to favor Fields. Uh, it's really interesting spot to look at Hertz, and he obviously can get there on the ground, but with Dallas Goddard hurt, that does condense things a little bit more. If you want to double stack, or if you want to play the tight end roulette game, um, which I'm going to dig in a little bit more, but you can get a stone min 2,500 yeah. tight end. So uh, that that interests me. And then Indy, of course, has some life with Matt Ryan at quarterback. That's going to at least give us some options there. Michael Pittman Jr. and Paris Campbell are both on the by Leone this week. And in a dome game, there's a lot of games that are kind of in, I don't want to say crappy weather, but like cold East Coast weather with a little bit of wind. These protected dome games get a little bit of boost relative, in my opinion. It is factored into the projections, but... Um, this game's a little bit sneaky. Uh, I, I think it's interesting. Yeah, I I was really uh, bummed to log on to DraftKings.com and see AJ Brown's salary at 8K. Uh, <laughs> that stung. And, you know, Michael Pittman's not exactly a salary saver either. I mean, he's 6,100, I, I think, on DraftKings. So, mm -hmm. again, it's like how you can build with it. And I certainly want to target this game too. It's just how do we find a way to build it where – we're saving enough there at the end. I think you mentioned the the cheap tight end Jack Stoll. That certainly would be an option. I'm, I'm afraid Paris Campbell's going to get steamed a little bit. I mean, we're already projecting him for 17 percent right yeah. now. I, I just think when you have a cheap wide receiver, you're trying to correlate. You're trying to game stack. It's just going to make that guy even more popular. So I'm a little worried about Campbell getting up there in ownership on DraftKings. But other than that. You're right. I mean, again, it's a dome game. 
I think we've seen when, you know, Hertz and Fields are similar in that they they run the ball, but I feel like if Jalen's best ceiling outcomes are rising to the surface, it means he's going to get his receivers involved. So we're talking Brown and Devonta Smith, whereas Fields is, I mean, they're calling so many designed runs for him in a game where they're going to be, both teams are going to be running uh, running the ball at a, at a really high clip. So yeah, I want I want to look at this game. Um, I want to keep Paris Campbell's ownership in mind. But if we're getting Philly, these Philly pieces at single digits, which is what we're projecting right now, I think that's a little bit more palatable. Yeah, the Paris Campbell one's tough to think through. I know last it reminds me of Donovan Peoples Jones last week, where there's one cheap wide receiver on DK that everyone's gonna play, and. I ended up not playing him in my Cleveland Miami stuff because I was like, I just, I just can't justify it, the ownership. There's part of me that's like, well, you know, with the correlation, should I have just eaten that chalk and, and differentiated elsewhere? So it's gonna be difficult to figure that out with Paris Campbell. But again, with the strict DK pricing, like Alec Pierce should be like low three Ks, and then like we could entertain that as a pure punt. But at like thirty nine hundred, it's really difficult to to leave four point two projected points on the table and not play Paris Campbell. For a few hundred bucks more like even given the ownership so that's tough jt you know has we saw him break the big run um the pass catching is going to be a lot better with ryan but that that just gets really again really expensive if you want to do hurts aj brown jt the way to play eagles though like if you did like hurts devonta smith punt tight end then you're actually not talking too much salary um but you of course lose you lose right. the, the gam alpha aj brown when you do that let's move over to chicago atlanta uh because that's the hurts comparable there with justin fields looking as a better value people are going to want to play him he's just been outrageous it's been very difficult to project him because when you run as a quarterback over 10 times a game and you're still going to somehow average 10 yards per carry and you know just score a touchdown twice it's uh Difficult to move that, put that in the projection. So huge ceiling for fields is a game you're worried about running. Uh, like th this, the other, like, like Chase Claypool is 4,800. Like, come on. Um, Komet's difficult to project because I think he's scored like one touchdown in his whole career prior to like two yeah. weeks ago and three weeks ago. And now he's got five or whatever. Mooney's always fun, like downfield, but. Yeah, it's a difficult correlation spot, and Fields is starting to get a little bit pricier. What's interesting is David Montgomery could be really chalky this week, and Fields might actually be some leverage off that with Cleo Herbert out. And we're always, you know, good finding ways to fade that. Uh, and Atlanta yeah. side of things, it's just it's been so frustrating. Uh, Mariota is pretty cheap, though. I think he's like actually in play a little bit, like Mariota skinnies. Um, what do you think about that? Oh, uh, I think if we're comparing the two quarterbacks, man, I just been burned by Mariota so many times this year. I, I, I think this game is so affordable though that if you really wanted to lean into the heavy game stack and just hope that the teams get there, even you know, despite the high PR or a low PR PROE, um, I think I'd still lean Fields just because it's so easy to make the other guys work salary wise. You could easily. Mm -hmm. You know, you could, like we said, you know, Claypool's 4,800, even though he's not a great value. Mooney on DraftKings is only 5,400, even though, again, he's not a great value. But those guys are going to be leveraged off of Chalky Montgomery. And it's pretty easy to come back on Atlanta's side and fit in a guy uh, like Drake like Drake London or Kyle Pitts again. I mean, again, we're not talking good value. So it, it's not the best uh, projection-wise or ceiling-wise. But I, I think we we're at a point with Fields where we know his floor is so safe, and even if he gets these guys involved, you know, just a little bit. I mean, it, it's not going to take much um, for those guys' price tags to pay off. So I, yeah. I definitely want to look at it. It's just the 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 run rate and the pace of the game. Well, I, I, maybe the I mean, it, it seems like these these teams play a little bit up pace, even despite their. Um, yeah, I was gonna. That's a good good call to pull up the snaps and pace. It's yeah, kind of trending towards on the yeah. Yeah, Thorman has it as um, 
let's see. I think he's got as like kind of a tweener game. Yeah. So up, but not in pace, um, which which is interesting. Basically, we could see this team run. I think what we're seeing here in this chart is these teams haven't run a ton of plays, which is the you know the x axis here. But their their pace, like the play clock stuff, has been actually okay. And you get that together, you get some bigger plays and some efficiency. It could be good. So he's got them sort of in their own little like tweener category for the week. Yeah, I think just from a, a like if I'm taking a step back, uh, I'm probably not going to be full game stacking this. But I, again, I could understand why people would. I think the if you're going to play fields, I, I could still see a bunch of people just finding many correlations outside of this game that go with fields um, or, you know, maybe just doing a fields mini correlation with one other player from the game. I, I probably will avoid full game stacking it in my opinion, just because I think we're sacrificing too much healing with the rest of the players. Yeah. And you definitely make a good point about like, if you are playing this game, like just find the money to play fields over moon or fields over Mariota as the quarterback. I know when Gary, Hartman, who does the GPP leverage column and fills in on a lot of our show, is a really good large field GPP player. A lot of times he'll make that point. He's like, if I'm playing this game, if, if I'm playing this game as if it's to go off, Fields is going to crush Mariota and ceiling. Like, that's what I want, the ceiling, ceiling, yeah. ceiling. Um, so I think he would definitely agree with you on that point. I do think Kyle Pitts is a fun play in this game. Like on DraftKings, I was just looking at tight ends and – if you sort on ceiling at tight end, Pitts has the fourth best ceiling, but he's in this bucket of like $4,000 players where if we sort on value, all those guys are better like base projected values where Higby is just hard to project poorly with Cooper Cup out. Like the targets are going to be there. Fryermuth looks good. Like Schultz in this Dallas, Minnesota game. I could see Pitts getting squeezed and he's just had some absurd air yards games that, yeah, I know it hasn't come to fruition a lot, but he did, he did win the Millie maker one week. It can happen again. Um, just, he's just utilized like other tight ends aren't, they give him his ceiling. If they, if they could just connect on some of these downfield throws, I, I would say if they throw more, but like the air yards and the opportunities have been there, I think he's like something like, th you know, over 300 yeah. air yards the last two weeks, which is pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, like I said, if you're if you're looking for a play mm -hmm. there, you know, I think Pitts is definitely viable. He certainly certainly had the opportunity more so than London. So, um, yeah, I I, I think that's that's a, a solid play. The how the pricing works out on the slate, you're going to need some guys with some ceiling at lower price tags. One game that you put in our notes is a salary saver game on FanDuel. That's like kind of interesting to me is this Denver Las Vegas game and of the games that have low totals this is the game that that projects the best in game scores um the and the, the total is affecting the game score and dragging it down if we took out the game total it would look a little bit better you do see on FanDuel like what I struggle with is Russ who's a really good salary saver on FanDuel like it's a very he's just been so bad like, can you win a GPP with that? Like, does he have the ceiling? But the skinny stack for him with Cortland Sutton, who is kind of my cover player for the By Leone podcast this week, is, is intriguing to me. And it's not going to be particularly owned. I just, like, can we get a Russ three touchdown game? I don't know. We just, we haven't seen anything close to it yet. And we kind of just keep holding on to it. But that's, that's like a pretty easy skinny to make with, you know, bringing back either Adams or Jacobs. Yeah, I it, it, this this game stood out to me a little bit. Um I it seems like always the Raiders games are those low total games that stick out because you're we're always kind of projecting higher value on them especially with Jacobs and Adams. And I think this this week is no different. Um I I feel hesitant putting my faith in Russ to get there. Um but yeah, I mean it, he's going to help you get some value at some lower salary. And it, I mean, that, that correlation that we just talked about Russ Sutton and Adams fits really well. And I don't know if it's, I don't think it's going to get played a lot at all. Um, 
you know, maybe more so on Fandle because it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a better value. Uh, but again, it's a, it, yeah, it's an indoor game. I, you know, Russ showed yeah, the, the, at least the, the tendency and the, the want to throw the ball last week uh, at Tennessee. I felt like he was, it's like, I wasn't watching the game, but it looked like throughout the first half, he was routinely going uh, to Sutton, even out, you know, when, and especially once Judy left the game. So, think the target concentration is there you're, you're really kind of banking that again we're going to get a ceiling game from Russ here um so it's a little thin but I, I don't think it's I don't think it's too bad um but again I, I would recommend it more on, on FanDuel than, than DraftKings yeah the the big question is are you just better off doing a mini correlation with Sutton and a, and a Raider and, yeah and yeah <clears throat> just like the you know, it's tough because Russ is very cheap where he obviously doesn't need the same ceiling to compete. But it is a week, especially on FanDuel, where like Lamar's even more in play, where it's like, does he beat both the quarterbacks in Minnesota, Dallas? Then he's got to beat Allen, Lamar, Fields, Hurts. Not beat, but like compete with. Keep pace, yeah. you know, to an extent. Like that's, that's the conversation. You need like a pretty specific outcome. I think I'd feel better about it if it was like, Allen and Lamar by themselves or Fields and Hurts by themselves. But when you start, when there starts to be like four guys and then one really good game stack and it's like, you need Minnesota Dallas to fail or you need those guys to not, one of those guys to not go nuclear. And then four of these running quarterbacks to not go nuclear. <clears throat> I don't know. It's tough. So I'm leaning against it right now, but I do think it's like interesting. It's like a good call out. Um, It'd be a week where, like, if no quarterback scores more, like, if all those quarterbacks score in the low 30s, even though it's high, like, Russ is for sure going to get it done at 24, right? Like, that's going right. to get it done if he gets there. Um, the question is, like, one of those guys get to 40, you're, like, absolutely in trouble. Um, what about what about another – oh, sorry, go, go ahead. I was just going to transition into Daniel Jones, but um, – Yeah, Danny Dimes. So, yeah. this Giants Det – Detroit game. Detroit's defense has just been so bad. We do have dimes as like an okay value, but the ceiling doesn't come out great for him. Um, that's for a few reasons. It's not the best total. Like we get an outdoor game and just the play calling for the Giants. He's kind of like in that quarterback range where like he runs, but like does he run enough? You kind of think like what we thought about Fields, I guess, like five weeks ago, which is like Sure, he can run a little bit, but is there enough juice there? And obviously, with Fields, they're turned out to be. But on the, you know, we know Dimes doesn't have quite that upside, so that's a difficult one. It is one of the few pace up games um, that we get that was highlighted by Thorman this week. The question, I guess, is just like how do you how do you play it, or do you just use Dimes as like your naked quarterback to play other game stacks? Um, I think you can attack it, you know, I mean, I think getting Amon Ra in there is, is crucial if you're going to, if you're going to game stack it. Um, I mean, he, we were projecting him for 22%, but Amon Ra is always a great value and he does have that ceiling ability. I, you know, you could even, if you didn't want to go full game stack, I think you could even correlate it that way where you just run it with Daniel Jones and you correlate it with Amon Ra and you hope that Danny Dimes you know, falls into the end zone or read options his way into the end zone a couple of times. And then you can kind of bring it back with Amon Ra. So you're not losing any of that correlation on the Giants side. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the ceiling, the ceiling options here are, are not great. Um, you know, Darius Slayton is getting more and more involved in the Giants passing game. He had a great game last week for the Giants. It, his value That's is a... not great, but he is only 5K on, on DraftKings and he's, projecting to be really low owned yeah it's another case where like how is Darius Slayton not like 4400 yeah like, <laughs> like what are we what are we doing what are we doing what are we I mean, doing 5k Darius Slayton like are you kidding me like at least he had you know a touchdown like a long touchdown catch to, to you he's got the least, downfield like, ability yeah. like and I'll give that to you and like if you were getting really contrarian in large field MME Sure, but like I can't click that in small field, you know. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. just no. I can't no. do it. 
Uh, All right. Any other games? I I think that's mostly it. Like, um, the if Lamar Andrews comes in mega low, that's something that's just like ignore all their contacts and blindly play it when you can get those guys at single digits. So how, how are we feeling about Andrew's chances? So he got in two limited practices. Okay. Silva said in our Slack channel, and I quote, my sense is Andrew's is all systems go. So obviously a little bit of guesswork there and it's just a feel thing, but Silva's Silva's pretty in. Oh, by the way, shout out to my, my hoodie. Go. So Very Silva nice. Levitan election nice. season hoodie for those just listening yeah. and can't see. The um, midterms, the midterms are over, but uh please go vote. <laughs> so support the cause. But not it's not over where you are, right? Aren't you in Georgia or no? Are you in Georgia? No, I'm in Texas. Oh, Texas. Why did I think Georgia? Somewhere I did you were just complaining about 48 degrees. So. Yeah, I was complaining about 48 degree weather and uh yeah. Mike got mad at me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As you're about to get dumped on with six feet of snow, so I <laughs> do want to be sensitive to the uh, to my fellow New Yorkers. Um, anything else that sticks out to you? That's kind of like this. I guess super gross would maybe be something in Washington, Houston. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Yeah. Um, for a games tag. Yeah, I, I think yeah. If you're gonna go somewhere a little bit gross, um, keep that. Keep an eye on that Baltimore Carolina game. You can easily get Lamar and Andrews in there, and DJ Moore is, you know, fifty seven hundred on DK. I didn't know what it, I didn't look what his uh, Fanduel price is, but that's an easy correlation you can make. Um, yeah, and you know the total isn't awesome, but um, I think if we can get some, if we can get some some renewed faith in Andrews that he's going to be full systems go, I think that game is certainly appealing in that regard yeah you want to do uh, a couple gross plays you have a gross play i've got several adam <laughs> just which which one is the least embarrassing for me to put out dirt plant section all dirt right what plant. do you i'm gonna let you go first on dirt plants okay uh we talked about this game earlier um i think it kind of makes sense for my dirt plant this week to be a tight end because again we might be looking at a slate where we got to play a really gross cheap tight end to make our other ceiling plays work. Uh, this game is higher on the game scores. It's in a dome. Um, I'm gonna go with Grant Calcaterra. Oh I wow! Don't, I don't oh, even maybe. know. I don't even know if I'm saying his name right. Um, but again, we we talked about Dallas Goddard being out. And if we want Jalen Hurts to get there, not only in the run, but in the passing game, get his receivers involved. We said it's going to be tough to stack with A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith just due to salary. So if you're looking to get really cheap, I mean, Grant Cocktera seems to be there receiving tight end ahead of Jack Stoll. I think he's kind of more involved. So I don't know. You can get like a little five-yard touchdown pass to, to uh, Calcaterra. Maybe get. Let's, I mean, is it is it that gross, or am I am I onto something there? Uh, well, hopefully this is a safe space. But you're you're pumping my bags here because I put in a, a decent wager on uh, Calcaterra plus nineteen hundred to score anytime oh. touchdown. Uh, okay. Yesterday, so so there I hope go. it happens, man. I got I got go. the anytime. I think it's down to like plus fourteen hundred on Caesars now. So that that might be that that bet might be out. So. Uh, Silva, I believe, thinks that he's going to be the receiving tight end as well. Of course, Stoll is there. It sounds like Tyree Jackson will be up, but not sure like how much he's going to play this first week. So this could be definitely be Calcaterra week. And you've set the bar. I don't know if I want to say high or low for the dirt plants. I mean, I was like wondering if, if Kyle Pitts qualified for a dirt plant. So now I'm like scrambling here. Wow. Like I got I went, I went, I dug, I dug really low. I dug really low there. People know Kyle Pitts, but no one had Grant Calcaterra on the radar. If Twitter is still alive by the end of the slate this week and Calcaterra gets there, uh, everyone can at me and say thank you for the uh, Calcaterra dirt plant. All right. I guess I'll go with Russ. Russ throws three touchdowns, which makes it enough. So Russ Sutton 
which I, I think at this point, Russ is on the level of yeah. Grant Calvitera. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Yes. so um, as we talked through, like definitely worried about the complexion of quarterback and that being worth it. But there, there's a scenario where, where we get like 250 and three from Russ and it's enough on FanDuel to let you get in some of the stud other players. So I'll go, I'll, I'll go the gross Russ skinny stack there. I like that. All right. That's it for the GPP Game Scores podcast, week 11. Adam, thanks so much for joining me. Again, we'll try to make this weekly. It just kind of depends on the schedule. As I say that, probably will not have one next week with the Thanksgiving week really just throwing throwing things off. Um, we're going to have some special ETR shows over the course of the week, though, especially early in the week pre-Thanksgiving. Dink and I will have our Tuesday drinking edition of Established a Million, so make sure to check that out but first check us out this week saturday on establish a million for week 11 thank you so much for tuning in everybody best of luck this week